Welcome back to the channel. I was going to start working on the flap around controls and I ran into a couple other things that had to be done. So I threw those in the video. If you want to see more about the front of the fuselage and how much we got done on it this week, stick around. Well, we're going to start back on the fuselage today, and uh, I'm sorry I haven't put anything out for a while, but that upper respiratory thing that was going around here in Michigan really put me on my butt. Thank God for good doctors who know how to prescribe prednisone because I had no idea since I got asthma that that would just about take you out when you start coughing. Your asthma just goes through the roof. For those who have asthma and have went through that, my hat's off to you. So I think the logical approach to the fuselage at this point is to go in here and get this all prepped out and get it all primed up and ready to rock and roll for paint um, so that I can go ahead and put my controls in without having them in the way in the future. Full disclosure, when I was doing this and setting it up, I was drilling out these for the A6s because they wouldn't fit in, just doing like a clearance drill. And without thinking, I was thinking that these were rivets also, and I drilled those, which, which take this AN312, and now it rattles in there quite a bit, and I don't like that. So I bought a set of uh, AN412s, and believe it or not, the shank or the grip on them is just a hair less than the AN3 when you line them up is literally one millimeter shorter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm definitely gonna size these up so that they'll be tougher. And I'm putting them through this way so that I have a solid grip in the aluminum. And if I went this way, there would be a hair bit of a thread stuck into the aluminum. So that's why you'll see them in this way with the nut. And uh, I don't worry about one little half a thread in nylon. See how little sticks out of there? And I've got two layers of very thick aluminum to go through, so it might squeeze down a bit. Matter of fact, I'll try a, I'm going to about 20. You can feel a difference. I'll just take that off and see if it slid up in there very far. I wonder why the specs are so different. I got these from Aircraft Spruce. Slide this in so you can see the difference. These little details I think really matter. So that would definitely go through. You'd need a washer and it'd be great. This one, it's all the way up. Snap right up tight. Just not enough, not enough there. That's what we're gonna do. Oh, that fits nice. I noticed here there's a little clearance issue by that uh, backside grommet. So it doesn't say anything about making that better a clearance, but I think I'm going to. Yeah, that'll work. Just one more step that I didn't have to do, but I want to make sure this doesn't want to ever chuck back and forth after that drilling accident. They weren't that sloppy, but I wasn't willing to take a, a chance. Well, since I've been looking at this, and yeah, to do the inside would be nice, nice but then I ran into that, and now, now I, ran I ran into this. I might as well get these trimmed up. Sorry about my horse throat, but that 
settled into my throat really bad too. So I'm just gonna tape up the outside. I'm gonna get a grinder and peel. I'm just gonna grind that until it's nice and flush on the bottom and up the side. I think that's good. Softened all the edges. So I just come straight to where it meets that angle perfectly straight up and down. We'll see with the part in here what that gap looks like later, but that makes sense to me. So that's the way I'm doing it. Well, we got the backside finally primed and uh, it was a couple little runs. Nothing I can't sand out before I paint, but that's because I'm such a good primer. Just got that done. I'm now assembling the, the bell crank. And I decided to put the bolts in backwards because after measuring them and putting them through the nylon the other way, the threads were solidly in the aluminum and I didn't want to upsize the bolts. So the logic goes here. Uh, I've got a, the thin, a thin washer on these so I could get more thread through. I had two solid threads, maybe three, through the nut, the locking nut. And uh, the back, it uh, doesn't matter if there's just a hair bit of a thread into the nylon. So the grip of the bolt goes through the nylon 95%. And uh, if I ever want to replace these, there is room for the bolt to be pushed out the back. Then a guy could put them in the other direction if he wanted to but I don't ever look forward to replacing these bearings because they'll be greased up good and I just don't see them wearing out in my lifetime. So those are done and uh, I'm gonna leave these kind of a polished look. Uh, after I get it painted I'll be putting these in. And At this point I just got to put these side sides in and rivet the uh, bearings in and then that'll be done. Next, I've been sanding and cleaning up these edges. I don't think I want to leave them 100% pointed in case they turn. I don't want that point to catch on things. And I'm beveling the edges so that they can spin freely. Uh, it's quite a bit of messing around, but just like any other part, just got to take the time to clean it up, mark the centers and get those drilled. So back when I prepped this, I took this on the sander and I beveled the edge on the points here. So they're rounded over quite a bit so things will um, not want to catch as it's turning on there. But they're nice and clean, lightly sanded. They'll receive grease and be assembled. So all I got to do now is find the hardware and the correct size pin. I haven't found one of those yet, the cotter pins. So that's going to be new to me. I got to figure out the sizing on that. Oh, I see they're a lock nut there. They have a hole through. But let's see what nine is. Oh, well, it's a castle nut. So they don't show, yeah, they show, yeah, it shows the uh, cotter pin. Yeah, it does show the cotter pin and it is a castle nut. So it's a three dash three, whatever that means. I don't know what diameter or anything. So I'm gonna have to research that. I don't wanna grab something too big or too small. Just want to be just right. Okay, that all checked out, but I should have remembered that uh, the 970 is the number of the washer, so cut that in half and it'd be 3 8 And that's what it measured out to be. And it told on uh, aircraft spoofs the outside dimensions and the thickness, so it was all correct. So let's move on to getting the centers of these drilled out to 3 8 This was a little bit hairy. I just took a bunch of scraps I had and uh, screwed them all together on a piece of plywood here. And I put a screw on the other side because it kept wanting to lift up. Twisting wasn't the problem. Lifting up in the back was. So this little jig really helped a lot. Made it safer. finished up drilling these brackets to a half inch hole so that the 
it would move slightly on that sleeve so that we could tighten the uh, castle nut down and torque it. And um, got it all greased up and done. I already got these cut to length to 334. Now I'm gonna go for the 705. When you back this down all the way, your jam nut to the threads and get done measuring them on the table, I had marks set on the table. Um, once you screw this in, it does touch the jam nut on both of them. So they got that figured out right within a millimeter. Um, the only thing I'm wondering now, if I need to screw these down for an adjustment, I guess you'd have to take some off of this piece, which I don't think is acceptable. So. Hopefully all we have to do is adjust them out a little bit and we have the witness hole and we're way past that. So I guess that's our leeway right there. I, I set everything up here and I set it all level like in the picture and I even hooked up this tube and marked the center. That's what I had this jigged up to, mark the center so I'd know right where it was and uh, double check the, the short tubes and they come out really good. So a quick explanation of why I'm, I'm making my own washers for this, because the ones that come with the, uh, from Aircraft Spruce, with that center hole, and they're, they're definitely thicker, and I don't have any thin ones, and it calls for a thin washer. So I've taken these galvanized and uh, reamed the inner, insides out, and they're the perfect diameter that I want so that this can move back and forth and not limit its throw by hitting this hitting out here on this. Because when this pivots up and down, as we all know, it changes this, it lets it rock on there quite a bit. So I'm gonna permanently do this up, but the other thing I'm gonna do because I'm using a hair thicker washer, I have two full threads uh, sticking out of the nylock, uh, but I'm gonna also, I cleaned it off with thinner and I'm using Loctite because I'm doing these now permanent. Any adjustments I have to make is going to be in the center to get these level. Once the plane's together, I'm gonna be bolting that up anyway. So I want this permanent. And I can just snug that with a wrench and we'll be done. So that's why I'm going this route. First time I got to be in the hell hole, I moved this out far enough that I could get in here and I put weight in the tail, on the tail, a bunch of sandbags, so it's not gonna fall, I hope. But I gotta get these four back here on both sides. I tried going through the window, this wouldn't work. spoiled riveting things in the out on the sides and the wings and we're gonna start getting into these interior pieces which is really nice if you can figure out how to do it before you put it all together so I hope I'm not doing something before I should I've checked out these sides and they go on later so that one can go in and I can slide the braces in. It looks like this will work. But you always have your doubts. And you just ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? I have to take a few rivets out. All right, I'll inspect these real quick. I may never see them again for a long, long time. They look good. All right. Try to use a selfie stick and show you 
right there are the ones I was trying to do on both sides. On the side bracket where that bearing is right there, the second one down hits that cross member. Um, you may have to cut your rivet, but what I did is I just angled it down and pulled up on this little and got the rivet to, if you want to see it better there, I got the rivet to slide under it right there just enough and then pulled it. So I got a full size rivet in there, but you might want to just cut a rivet down half and Complete braces built and put in on each side and uh, up above. And uh, it's all primed up, plus these side channels. And the next thing, the big boxes that go over these, so I can install these. I think I'm gonna have to build a, um, a uh, right up in here, a uh, hole so that I can get at them bolts. And then I can go ahead and just install them, put a little bit of foam in there so they don't bounce around. I like getting things done. So I even might take and install the motor and get the wires wrapped up back there. And uh, then I'll have a better idea of the space and things like that. Let's see. Yeah, that, that, uh, I gotta pick up all these pins, but as you can see that that marker went right through that uh, primer. It'll be interesting to see if it does when I paint it. Of course, this isn't going to get painted. This is going to uh, be just covered. And uh, I painted it so in case it cracks, I can see it. And, and of course, for uh, rust and stuff, corrode. Well, no, that's steel, so rust. So let's see. Yep. I think maybe I'll jump up and do these and get those upper brackets on. I can't uh -huh. see why not. And I'll probably make some nice access panels back there. And I'm thinking of making big ones in the bottom. Uh, I like that idea of being able to unscrew that back there to make adjustments and just screw it back together. Um, it really feels good to get those inside parts done. And it's amazing how much it strengthened up the, the racking of the box. It measured out the X really good in the front. I don't know, I didn't even talk about that much, but I double checked the X and, and made sure that it was square before I uh, started riveting those side braces in and it's perfect, it's right on the money. Their holes are really nice, but you could shove it all one way and have it rack on you just a little and rivet them in and you would want to stick there. Today I ordered another 800 A5s and another 200 A4s and I think 50 A6s um, just because I like using them and up drilling and I had no idea I had used that many rivets up when I did the wing over. I didn't have the skins on, but I know that I had to take the whole um, skeleton apart. Uh, but apparently, um, I used quite a few. Um, I've looked everywhere, and I've pretty much used up all my rivets. So I kind of made a calculation of 800 more. I'll probably even need more. Who knows? But anyway, if you like this one, please like it. If you want to see more, subscribe, and you'll get a notification. And you know the drill. We'll see you later.